north to south, coast to coast. This is the Wells Report. My name is John David Wells. Our telephone number is 844-RADIO-US, 844-723-4687. 17 minutes ago, in the Boston Globe, news has broken that prosecutors are dropping assault charges against actor Kevin Spacey. Cape and Island's prosecutors have dropped a criminal indecent assault and battery charge against Hollywood actor Kevin Spacey, this according to court records. Cape and Island's district attorney, Michael O'Keefe, filed a nolle prosecute, or prose, prosequi, I'm sorry, nolle prosequi motion against the case. I hope I'm saying that correct. Nolle pro, prosequi motion in the ending the case, citing, quote, the unavail, unavailability of the complaining witness, unquote. O'Keefe's office said in a statement, the decisions came after prosecutors met on Sunday with the complaining witness, his attorney, and family members. Here is the actual statement. Cape and Islands District Attorney Michael O'Keefe announced today a nolle prosequi has been filed in the case of Commonwealth versus Kevin S. Fowler. On July 8, 2019, at a hearing... In Nantucket District Court, Judge Thomas S. Barrett appointed attorney Jenny uh, Jenny Margison to represent the complaining witness regarding his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. The proceeding was suspended after the judge, in a colloquy with the complaining witness and counsel, found that the complaining witness had a valid claim of the right, that of being Fifth Amendment right. On Sunday, July 14th, the complaining witness, family members, and the attorney for the complaining witness met in the district attorney's office to further review the case in light of the development. The complaining witness was informed that if he so chose to continue to invoke his Fifth Amendment right, the case would not be able to go forward. After a further period of reflection privately with his lawyer, the complaining witness elected not to waive his right under the Fifth Amendment. The complaining witness was further instructed the only remaining avenue was to continue the prosecution since grants of immunity may not be given in district court would be to indict the the defendant, immunize the complaining witness and force his testimony. This procedure has several infirmities. One, a a defendant cannot be convicted on the uncorroborated testimony of an immunized witness. It is the second consideration that is more concerning. A grant of immunity compromises the witness to a degree which, in a case where credibility of the witness is paramount, makes further prosecution untenable. As a consequence, the Commonwealth has entered a nolle prosequi in the case. It was granted prosecutors have dropped charges against Kevin Spacey. Yeah, so apparently, when it comes to the harsh, sterile courtroom, crimes of passion, sexual and otherwise, apparently have to be proven. And they have to be proven by someone who cannot be charged for a crime in the pursuit of prosecuting someone under those circumstances. That's what we call American law. That's what we call that's what we call due process of law. Kevin Spacey has been irreparably damaged by all of this. This is what happens when you work a little bit too hard at trying to figure out some way where you work a little bit too hard at figuring out some way of running someone to earth. You'll have to forgive me. I was peacefully minding my own business and the unmistakable sound of an Apache gunship uh, (laughs) filled my ears and I just watched one look like it was armed fly right over our building. Sorry, you just stop. When you hear that sound, that unmistakable you you just realize that that's not a civilian helicopter. It's somebody that's doing something a little more serious. So there you go. So Kevin Spacey, he's been irreparably damaged. What's going to happen with his career? 
he lost an unbelievably successful television series because of these charges. What will he do? Well, he's going to pay his lawyers a whole bunch of money. Is he going to get this from his accuser? No. There's no money. Is he going to get back his series? No. No, he's not. Netflix dropped him like a hot rock. And and here you go with one of these with one of these things. You know, it's it's one of these things. This is one of those things where somebody makes an accusation, swears to it in a court of law, destroys the person involved. Of course, the case isn't proved. And now, now they the guy who at this who's at the center of the case, the actual defendant, is gonna have to fight for his reputation. Is he ever gonna recover it? I don't know. House of Cards was perhaps one of the most brilliant pieces of television anybody ever saw. It wouldn't take too much imagination to be able to write him back into the series. But I gotta be perfectly honest with you, after everything that Kevin Spacey has gone through, I would go back to my previous employers and say, sure, I can pick that back up again, but you're going to need a bigger checkbook. Planned Parenthood yesterday removed its president after less than a year in the job. They want new leadership. At a time when abortion rights have come under increasing attack from state houses and Republicans in Washington. The sudden ouster reflect is reflected a widening disagreement between the president, Leanna Wen, and the board of directors over her management style and in which direction to steer one of the nation's leading women's reproductive rights groups. Her departure followed a series of negotiations that appeared to end acrimoniously on Tuesday. In a Twitter post, Dr. Wen said her fate was decided at a secret meeting, which the organization disputed. She later issued a statement saying she was leaving because the new board chairs and I have philosophical differences over the direction and future of Planned Parenthood. She is a she's a doctor. And obviously, the people that are running Planned Parenthood are not doctors, they are they are opportunists. And maybe there was a kind of a disagreement as to the way you're supposed to handle this kind of stuff. Dr. Wen was the first physician to lead the organization in decades. She said the best way to protect abortion care is to be clear that it is not a political issue, but a health care one, and that we can expand support for reproductive rights. Four people familiar with the matter said the group's board of directors felt it needed a more aggressive political leader to combat the current efforts to roll back access to abortions. This is the death knell of Planned Parenthood. What they're going to do at this particular moment is they are going to try to get into a fistfight with President Trump. That's probably not a real good idea. As a matter of fact, that's probably a gigantic mistake. And indeed, I think that's exactly the case. It is a gigantic mistake. Now, I don't know exactly how this is going to go, but all I can say is is that it's, it's serious. And it's more serious than it should be. And the reason it's serious is because, well, the people of, the people of Planned Parenthood have been running a, an amazing game on the people of the United States. It's been a situation where, where for whatever reason, this particular organization is nourished with tax dollars. Why? Why is it that, that Planned Parenthood gets tax money? Why is that? <clears throat> I have a real problem with it, actually. I don't want... Planned Parenthood to have that kind of capability. 
I just don't. I mean, I'm pretty pretty serious that what's going on is this is a horrifyingly terrible organization. A horrifying organization that is doing terrible, terrible work and is being nourished by American federal dollars. And I find it ridiculous. I also find it frightening. The urgency of the issue appeared to be at the heart of the disagreement, Dr. Wen said simply that this needs to be a health care right. Well, health care for who? Her brief tenure she took over last November coincided with a particularly fraught moment for the abortion rights activists or advocates. In recent months, Republican-controlled state houses in Ohio, Alabama, Indiana, Louisiana, and Missouri have moved decisively to restrict abortion access as they take aim at the protections enshrined in Roe v. Wade. That has put abortion rights groups, including Planned Parenthood, on the defensive as they battle conservative messaging, much of it ominous and some of it false, as claims such as claims about infanticide. Well, that's because you keep turning to politicians to be your spokesman. That's because you keep turning to people that should, should have no business whatsoever talking and let them do your talking for you. It's because James O'Keefe from Project Veritas put a camera in front of your one of your operatives and started listening to her talk about how she wanted to be able to mill baby parts because she wanted a Lamborghini. That's how you lose the war. That's how you lose the war. You know... Planned Parenthood is an organization like many others. Planned Parenthood is an organization that has a right to operate. It just doesn't have a right to operate with federal dollars. No more than the American Cancer Society, the American Heart Association, or any of the others. In Washington this week, Planned Parenthood is is confronting a new Trump administration rule stating that taxpayer-funded family planning clinics must stop referring women for abortions. With health centers nationwide, Planned Parenthood receives close to $60 million every year through the federal family planning program, and the new edict is widely seen as being aimed at the organization. Trump administration won a key victory last week as the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit declined to block it from enforcing the rule. Anti-abortion groups were quick to respond to Dr. Wen's ouster. Americans United for Life, a leading anti-abortion legal firm, said in a statement Dr. Wen has consistently traded on her training as a physician to perpetuate Planned Parenthood's falsehood that abortion is health care. See, that's the problem with having politicians involved in health care. It can be all kinds of things. Health care? Health care for who? You're listening to The Wells Report. Back with more in just a moment. It is a horrible scenario, but it happens. Dennis writes about his wife. She was diagnosed with leukemia. In fact, she's a two-time survivor. And in the midst of all that, they ran up over a million dollars in medical bills. Thankfully... They're MediShare members, and Dennis says they are so thankful for that, how others came together to meet their needs. And that's how so many MediShare members feel. This is not health insurance. It's different. You don't have to pay for things you don't believe in. And like Dennis found out, it just works. So if you join MediShare, not only do you save a lot of money, the typical family saves about 500 bucks a month, but you know where your money's going each month. You're helping people, and if the time should come, they'll be helping and even praying for you. So, yes, it's different, and as more than 400,000 people now know, when it comes to health care costs, different is beautiful. Find out more. Call 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. This report is brought to you by Crescent Tools. Most toolboxes contain a Crescent wrench, which tradesmen and DIYers have trusted for more than a century. But what many call a Crescent wrench isn't always the real deal. The reason? 
True Crescent wrenches are made by Crescent Tools, which started producing the adjustable wrench in 1907. However, few realize that Crescent is the brand, not the tool. Nor do they understand that Crescent makes more than just wrenches. Brendan Walsh, Director of Product Management at Crescent Tools. What a person thinks is a Crescent wrench may just be an adjustable wrench, and there's a difference. We've innovated the Crescent wrench to meet the needs of today's tool user and have expanded to offer a solid crew of tools in addition to wrenches. While wrenches are their signature products, Crescent manufactures 2,800 tools including files, snips, storage cabinets, and measuring tapes. Establishing Crescent Tools is one of the most respected professional hand tool brands in the world. So, the next time you reach into your toolbox, check to see if it's actually a Crescent wrench or an imposter. For more information, visit www.crescenttool.com. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Why? Because you can save 45% on packages compared to your high-priced cable bill. Wow. Take those giant scissors out and cut the cable and save with Dish TV. Plus, you get a free DVR upgrade to record your favorite shows and free installation. And with Dish Anywhere, you can watch TV for free on your mobile device. Act fast. You can save hundreds of dollars. Does your cable company do that for you? I don't think so. Get all the best TV programming at your fingertips at a fraction of the price of cable TV. So say adios, arrivederci, goodbye to the high cable bill, and save up to 45% on Dish TV packages today. These are limited time offers and can change at any time. Call fast. 800-610-5739. 800-610-5739. That's 800-610-5739. Money, 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 money. You got to have it. When you need it, what do you do? If you don't have a rich uncle, call Lending Tree. With us, hundreds of banks compete for your business. So you'll get loans with competitive interest rates and in some cases with no closing costs. So here's the deal. If you need money, call us. Do you want to refinance your current loan? Are you 62 or older and interested in a reverse mortgage? Then call Lending Tree now. 800-634-1315, 800-634-1315, 800-634-1315, 800-634-1315. We've closed over $250 billion in loans. We know what we're doing and can help you. Call right now for a free quote. 800-634-1315, 800-634-1315, 800-634-1315. That's 800-634-1315. NMLS number 1136. You are listening to the Wells Report. My name is John David Wells. Our telephone number is 844-RADIO-US, 844-723-4687. Politics in America writ large and the misappropriation of public funding based on suspect definitions, parsings, and outright mis- misuse of the English language. This is not something that we have... We, this isn't something that we, that we could, could, could possibly consider rare. One of the problems with the United States in this particular age of its development and its particular history is the fact that the language that we saw in use in the 18th century, the mid to late 18th century, is not taught in this nation. That is a stunning oversight. It is so basic and so understand it, it, it's so easily understood that knowing the actual language, English, as practiced in the mid to late 17th century, or 18th century, excuse me, would be almost essential in the proper translation or the proper explanation or understanding of the Constitution of the United States, the Bill of Rights, and the Federalist Papers. Those are the bulwarks of the greatest nation on earth, the, the cornerstone, the cornerstone understandings that gave birth to the greatest nation on the planet. 
And we don't teach our children what the words on those pieces of parchment mean. And those people that have no excuse but to know what those words actually mean don't know what they mean as a calculated political fact. They don't want anybody else to know what those words mean either. The Constitution of the United States limits the government. How can you be Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Kamala Harris, Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell? How can you be any of those people and operate the way you do in a limited government? The answer is you cannot. This this nation was based on the premise that a just government derives its power from the consent of the governed. Do you feel like you've given your consent to the way this government operates theoretically on your behalf? Do you believe that you're being represented by this supposedly representative government? If you do, I... I can only hope that that people that believe that $25 trillion budget deficits overwhelm your apparent acceptance of it, and many other things, not the least of which is to perversely and, and grotesquely misappropriate the words health care in a Planned Parenthood context. Planned Parenthood should go on. They should do their work. But they shouldn't get a dime of federal money. I hope I see that day. And I hope I see it right soon. You're listening to The Wells Report. My name is John David Wells. Our telephone number is 844-RADIO-US, 844-723-4687. 844-723-4687. Let's talk about the issues of the day. That's what we do here on The Wells Report. You are listening to the USA Radio Network. I weighed 329 pounds. I was a heart attack waiting to happen. I got Andro 400. It makes me not so hungry. I started noticing more energy. I noticed my belly was starting to shrink up. I started seeing weight come off. 80 some pounds. I went from 330 to 245. For a 56 year old guy to lose that much weight, it took something, brother. I feel great. I feel like I was when I was 35 years old. That was Ruben. Now listen to what Josh says about Andro 400. Well, I'll tell you, man, that stuff really works. It was insane. I've heard the commercials walk for a decade. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to try it. My pants are like falling off. It really works. I bought suits last year for my new job, and they're falling off of me. It's insane. Guys, if you want to lose belly fat, gain energy, strength, and muscle, and look and feel years younger, try Andro 400, the safe, natural, and affordable way to boost your testosterone. Go to andro400.com or call 888 888- 400-0435. That's 888-400-0435. Andro400.com. 